On June 8, 2012, the Vancouver Police Department in Canada received a distressing call from 25-year-old Chinese exchange student Wan Zitang. Wan informed them that his mother, 47-year-old Lianji Guo, who was visiting him, had gone missing just a day before her scheduled return to China. Lianji, who spoke only Cantonese and didn't understand English, had arrived in Vancouver 20 days earlier with her husband, Tang Jihui. She had planned to visit their son, Juan, who was studying at Douglas College. The family had rented a and b and had planned numerous activities to spend quality time together exploring the city. After a pleasant visit with their son, Tang Jihui and Lianji Guo were set to depart for China on June 7, 2012. That morning, Juan, their son, took Lianji out for breakfast while Tang Jihui remained asleep. Upon returning to their rented apartment, Juan loaded their luggage into his car, briefly leaving to run an errand. When he returned, Lianji was nowhere to be found. Despite their efforts, they couldn't locate her in the city or at the airport. With heavy hearts, Tang Jihui reluctantly boarded the flight home alone, leaving Lianji's seat empty beside him. The next day, Juan contacted the police upon realizing his mother hadn't returned. An immediate investigation was launched to find Lianji. Despite finding no suspicious evidence at the scene, police initially speculated that she might be attempting to illegally stay in Canada. However, this theory was quickly debunked. The family, who owned a successful furniture transport business with international clientele, had no financial motive for such actions. Furthermore, Lianji had no history of addiction, mental health issues, extramarital affairs, or known enemies. This theory was further discredited when Lianji's belongings, including her money, passport, and handbag, were found in Juan's car. Concerned that his mother might have been abducted, Juan embarked on a mission to locate her. He distributed flyers with her picture and details, conducted interviews, and held press conferences to raise awareness about her disappearance. <laughs> Tang Jihui returned to Vancouver to assist in the search. The public, especially the Chinese community, rallied behind the father and son, volunteering in search efforts and showing support for their plight. Despite the initial theory, it became clear that Lianji's disappearance was not voluntary, prompting a dedicated effort to uncover the truth. As the police investigation continued, the absence of ransom calls weakened the kidnapping theory. With no new leads emerging, authorities began considering a more sinister possibility. As a last resort, they shifted their focus to the family members. During their scrutiny, a peculiar detail emerged. Juan had rented an apartment in the same B&B where his parents were staying, but had never disclosed this to the authorities. Initially, police believed Juan was living in his own separate apartment and visiting his parents occasionally during their stay. However, it turned out that he was residing next door to them the entire time. When questioned about the discrepancy, Juan's response was dismissive, stating, You didn't ask me. I didn't say. Further inquiry into why he rented a room in the B&B despite having an apartment nearby revealed his intention to spend as much time as possible with his parents. While this information didn't directly implicate Juan and his mother's disappearance, his nonchalant attitude raised suspicion. Investigators also noted Juan's attempts to downplay his English-speaking abilities, which seemed unusual given his six years of study in Canada. These factors led investigators to consider Juan as a person of interest in their inquiry. Amidst the unfolding investigation, another discrepancy arose in Juan's recounting of events. Initially, he informed the police that his mother went missing from the B&B alone. However, he later altered his story, stating that they had gone for breakfast together, and from there, she disappeared. 
Subsequently, he changed his narrative again, claiming that she vanished from his apartment. Tang Jehui, taken aback by his son's inconsistent statements, questioned why he would fabricate such stories. Wan explained that he did so to shield his landlord from legal repercussions. Although Tang Jihui found this explanation feeble, he opted to focus on locating his wife rather than confronting his son. As the police delved deeper into the case, they interrogated the tenants of the B&B in Richmond, Vancouver. However, all tenants attested to the family's harmonious relationship, leading investigators to a dead end without substantial evidence. Despite their frustration, Tang Jihui and Wan, in a press conference two weeks later, expressed hope for Lianji's safe return, although acknowledging the uncertainty surrounding her disappearance. Despite intensified efforts, including manpower increases and searches of nearby wooded areas, authorities were unable to locate any remains or evidence related to Lianji's disappearance. The case stagnated. On July 20th, 2012, Leonji's case was officially transferred to Canada's Integrated Homicide Investigation Unit, or IHIU. From the outset, detectives at IHIU suspected the involvement of Leonji's family members in her disappearance and presumed homicide. However, uncertainty lingered regarding whether Tang Ji Hui or Wan Ji Tang was responsible. Examining the inconsistencies in the case and Wan's contradictory statements, IHIU detectives honed their focus on him as a primary suspect. The discovery of traces of blood in the B&B room previously occupied by Wan raised suspicions further. Blood was found on the ceiling, walls, closet, nightstand, and a significant dried blood spot was located on the bed. Despite collecting the blood as evidence and sending it to the lab for testing, forensic analysis failed to conclusively identify its source. With the blood evidence inconclusive, authorities lacked sufficient grounds to apprehend Juan. Detectives sought to search Juan's apartment for further evidence, but faced obstacles in obtaining a search warrant. Juan adamantly refused entry without a warrant, complicating the investigative process. Without additional evidence or access to his apartment, authorities faced challenges in advancing the case against Juan as a suspect in his mother's disappearance. On July 20th, 2012, one and a half months after Leonji's disappearance, police received a report about a suitcase containing human remains found on the beach near Harwood Island, approximately a six-hour drive from Vancouver. Upon arrival, authorities discovered the body of a middle-aged Asian woman, initially suspected to be Leonji Guo based on her clothing. Subsequent autopsy results confirmed her identity revealing that she had succumbed to multiple blows to the head and inner spine. Notably, five steel nails bearing Chinese characters were found, consistent with Lianji's recent spinal surgery. Genetic testing conclusively identified the corpse as that of 47-year-old Lianji Guo. Unfortunately, the absence of surveillance cameras in the vicinity hindered efforts to identify who had left the suitcase on the beach. In response, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or RCMP, assumed control of the investigation and devised an undercover strategy. Without publicizing the discovery or informing Juan, the RCMP initiated a covert operation. In early August 2012, an undercover female police officer of Chinese descent contacted Juan, claiming to possess information regarding his mother. The officer, fluent in Cantonese, arranged to meet Juan at a local Starbucks and disclosed the discovery of Lianji's body inside a suitcase near the sea. She offered to dispose of the evidence for a fee. Although Juan denied any involvement in his mother's demise and expressed a desire to distance himself from the situation, the officer persisted, providing him with a two-day ultimatum to consider her proposition. Otherwise, she threatened to report the matter to the police. Juan, feeling trapped and desperate to comply with the demands of the undercover police officers, contacted them that night to agree to their terms. In subsequent meetings, he was introduced to two additional undercover officers who assured him that disposing of a body would be a straightforward task with the right resources. They even proposed using a team member who was terminally ill with cancer as a scapegoat if necessary, providing Juan told them all the details of the murder. 
However, Juan found himself in a dire financial situation and lacked the funds to pay the officers. In a shocking turn of events, he made a proposal that stunned even the undercover officers. He suggested that they kill his father instead, as he would inherit everything and be able to pay them. The officers agreed to Juan's proposal, but insisted on knowing all the details of his mother's demise. Falling into the trap, Juan began divulging the entire story to the undercover officers, unaware of the consequences of his actions. Juan, the only son of Tang Jihui and Lianji Guo from Foshan, grew up in a household dominated by his mother's strong personality. As co-owners of a thriving business with an annual turnover of 10 million yen, Lianji's assertive nature proved beneficial. However, her inclination to control extended beyond the business realm, especially concerning Juan. Often referred to as a tiger mom, Lianji meticulously scrutinized every aspect of Juan's life, including his career aspirations and romantic relationships. She even intervened in his love life, orchestrating a breakup with his high school sweetheart due to her modest family background. Lianji wielded tight control over the family's finances, tightly managing Juan's pocket money. In 2006, despite Juan's reluctance, his parents sent him to Canada to pursue a degree in hotel management at Douglas Community College. The intention was for Juan to establish his own identity in Canada and potentially expand the family business. Juan felt isolated in a foreign country, burdened by his mother's control and struggling with emotional abuse. To cope, he resorted to deception, fabricating excuses to obtain money for gambling and partying instead of focusing on his studies. His academic performance suffered, leading him to take on part-time work in a Chinese restaurant kitchen in Vancouver to support himself, despite visa restrictions on employment. Meanwhile, Wan's activities remained concealed from his family in China. During a visit home in 2011, he hastily proposed to a girl he met, sparking conflict when his mother intervened, arranging a marriage to a more suitable candidate. Disillusioned and feeling trapped in Canada after graduation, Juan longed to return to China and reunite with his fiancée. Despite his pleas to his father for understanding, Tang Jihui encouraged him to persevere. The strain on Juan's relationship intensified when his fiancée unexpectedly terminated her pregnancy, further exacerbating his sense of despair and isolation in Canada. On the morning of June 7th, Juan orchestrated his gruesome plan. Feigning a need for assistance in cleaning his room, he lured his mother into his quarters under the pretense of tidying up coins scattered on his bed. Seizing the opportunity, he struck her repeatedly on the head with a hammer retrieved from the B&B toolbox. When she resisted, he suffocated her with a sheet and delivered fatal blows to ensure her demise. Initially contemplating the murder of his father as well, Juan abandoned the idea to avoid suspicion arising from their simultaneous disappearance. After persuading his father to return to China, Juan returned to the BNB to conceal the evidence of his heinous act. He then assumed the role of a concerned son, reporting his mother missing to authorities. Unbeknownst to him, his detailed confession during undercover meetings was recorded, exposing his guilt. Investigators, armed with overwhelming evidence, meticulously built their case against Juan. They discovered traces of blood inside the rented car and uncovered burn stains and blood in the storage room of Juan's apartment. Despite the abundance of evidence, investigators opted for a deliberate approach, gathering additional proof to substantiate their case against Juan. On September 7, 2012, Wan Ji Tang was formally arrested for the murder of his mother exactly three months after her disappearance. Alongside the murder charge, he faced additional accusations of plotting to kill his father. Despite initially denying the allegations, Wan eventually confessed once confronted with overwhelming evidence, including the incriminating video footage captured during undercover operations. The news of Wan's arrest sent shockwaves through China prompting Tang Ji Hui's immediate return to Canada. Overwhelmed by disbelief and anguish, Tang Ji Hui struggled to comprehend how his own son could commit such a heinous act, turning his life upside down in an instant. Wan, displaying a chilling lack of remorse, expressed no regrets for his actions. 
Unwavering in his stance, he remained unapologetic about the heinous crime he committed. It was later revealed that Juan had meticulously planned to kill his parents, capitalizing on Canada's lack of a death penalty and underestimating the capabilities of Canadian law enforcement to solve such a twisted crime. Despite his calculated actions, Juan's intelligence proved to be overestimated, while Canadian law enforcement proved more than capable of bringing him to justice. Tang Ji Hui surprisingly chose to stand by his son throughout the trial. Not only did he forgive Juan, but he also invested a substantial portion of his fortune in his son's legal defense. Tang Ji Hui's rationale stemmed from the unbearable loss of his wife and his inability to bear losing his only son as well. In a poignant display of unconditional love, Tang Ji Hui expressed forgiveness to Juan during jail visits stating that even in the face of his son's wrongdoings, he couldn't bear the thought of living without him. In court, Tang Ji Hui testified as a prosecution witness, appealing for leniency for his son, emphasizing that Juan had been a good person before their strict parenting took its toll. However, the court's verdict deferred, ultimately finding Juan guilty after a lengthy trial. On February 2, 2015, the Supreme Court of Canada handed down a life sentence to Wan Ji Tang for the second-degree murder of his mother and the attempted murder of his father with eligibility for parole after 17 years. This case, characterized by themes of control and betrayal, stands as one of the most controversial and heart-wrenching in recent Canadian history. While justice was served, the tragic aftermath left a family irreparably shattered. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more videos like this, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Let us know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to ring that bell. That's all for now. See you next time.